Good afternoon, all. This is Fabi Hemsey uh, from lovely downtown Cape Naples. Uh, I did check we're five miles inland now from water. So nearest water uh, is about five miles, four and a half miles. I used to be less than a mile, and that was a little bit too much. Uh, our flagship Tiger Shark is doing fairly good. But now we're adding that module for risk management and slowing it down a little bit. Slowing your machine, we're having to, uh, we do, we have to make it lean and mean. I call it uh, uh, WRP, weight reduction program. That's what we used to call it, Northrop, as we get to this stage where the basics are working. Now we got to see, are we overdoing certain things because we are being uh, too conservative? And this is the I-9. So when it's true, it stops, it slows down. That's an interesting problem. Why is it happening? Uh, I'm privileged to, can't mention his name, but very, very high person high up at uh, Trade Station, who's very, very familiar with the Matrix, is coming to help us. Got recruited by one of my guys saying, hey, so-and-so, we need help. This is Fabi, he needs help. So we, they're going to come in just, just as an advisor, just as a Trade Station person, not to join the team or write one line of code or anything, but to advise us in their own ling lingo, what we doing here, because this now is 11,000 line of code, not a joke. Uh, no, it's not gonna be available to others. It's not a subscription. We're not giving that as a module. It is not written for anything particular. It works in any environment of trade station, as long as uh, you're trading and you have uh, you have a matrix. Yeah, yeah. so that uh, you could see the dome back and forth. Uh, here is the matrix. This is the matrix, for example. This is the matrix. As long as you have this with the trade bar, this comes in to do what this does not do, which is really robust risk management. Uh, so we've been working on it since like, uh, I think 15th of April, tax day, to now. Yeah. Anyhow, so my hours have been a little bit crazy. I get a little tired because uh, these guys work at night a lot. And uh, uh, and we, we can get a chance to go back and forth. And then during daytime, we just got installed another video camera there. So we record everything. Uh, it's in a video capture, screen capture in a video mode. Because it's just, I, 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 yeah, I'm not 22 anymore. I try to keep, write down all the conditions by hand. The video is the best. You can go back and forth and look at the whole screen. But everything else was given. So, and then we'll start probably by Monday start having the hedge funds come back in and another machine start looking at this because as we're getting to final contract negotiations and wrapping up uh, the account set up at trade station institutional and move forward. That's what I've been busy with. Okay. Aside from that, uh, all is well, just a little lack of sleep. Okay. Powell spoke today. And before we go there though, I'm going to see what mortgage data came in. Uh, point five. Wow. Yeah, rates up, rates ticked up, and that that just killed it. Yes, and so so is purchase. Yeah, I don't think rates are going to go down for a while. This is a misnomer. Actually, I was surprised they went on a pause. I did say it's a possibility, but I was, uh, as you know, I telegraphed it. I'll be surprised, and I did get surprised. But that's how it is. It's their business, their right to surprise us, right? Not the other way around. Um, jobless claims tomorrow. The, the highlight of what I read, I heard about, remember, I'm in tests in my own cocoon sometimes. Aside from doing live accounts, we're doing a little testing too. And actually, most of the morning, we did some uh, uh, sim testing. I declared that for sake of transparency. You know my attitude. Uh, a couple of, couple of trades in a day could be sim. We've done that this whole past week or so. As the programmers have a question, we run that. But... Uh, I, I got to trade also. I got to earn a living. So, uh, and sometimes it's a good one, opportunity. You, you you do a disservice to yourself and your family if you don't trade. You have all this knowledge, all these tools, and you don't put it to work. That's not good. Uh, so today, a couple of times we went on testing. I declared that in the room, but the rest of it was actual live test, live trading. In the afternoon, uh, uh, we we got a little bit more courageous, if you will. And start doing a live live test with a live account of one of Tico's accounts of uh, the RM. So I've been between 
different modes and a lot of note taking uh, with the 11,000 line of code. It is, it's, a, it's a monster. And a little tired, my apologies. But uh, I, you know what? The good thing is around 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, I'm out. I am completely out. I sometimes, so I get a little bit more rest, but that's what I need. Your body tells you a lot of things. It's a great. Our bodies have the best body clock ever. 262 was a jobless claim. 261. By the way, I'm not as tired as yesterday. Yesterday I was very tired. That's why I had to move it back. 261, um, 252, 271 range. Okay. So we're up taking a tad, maybe, from the last few months where we were at 220, 230 range. And Anita, if I'm wrong, please uh, uh, let me know. Oh, sorry. Oops. Okay. I was going there. Sorry. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Dennis. Yeah, Dennis. Yeah, sorry. We moved it. I had just gotten to uh, economic calendar. Sorry, I forgot to release the screen. I was going through emails. Right. Okay. So keep an eye on that. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, Jobless claim, as you know, is a very, very variable time series, kind of erratic sometimes. Uh, when we've been in this mode, usually 222, 30 sits there. But obviously, recently we're having some moves there. Yeah, Chicago Fed, I'm not too excited about it. Current, I can't forget it. Home sales, oh, yes, let's go to existing home sales. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate that. Um, 4.28 prior. Four two zero in the morning. Yeah, in consensus on that space. By the way, in the morning between me and Anita, I really appreciate her help. Of course, Nancy will kick, kicks in too. We go over these in the morning, just as a reminder. What time is it? What's the expectation? Okay. So that the key is how the market reacts to an expectation. That's the key you cannot miss. And then, of course, I'll throw in a couple of charts that are value. Maybe I'll share it on the tweet, Twitter, opening to others. We have. My attitude is going to give back. I've been very fortunate. Uh, this country opened its arms for me, and of course, I busted my ass, I've, and I've done well. I have no complaints. So, uh, a little give back is always good. Makes you feel better. Uh, another one that I want to look at tomorrow is leading indicators. Unfortunately, they are not giving it the the, the, the uh, uh, credit it, it, it should have. But I would always. Because that's how, for example, my thinking is with the CI. I'm a, kind of a physics guy and math. First derivative, second derivative. So when you say leading indicator, I want to be there. So I want to take a look at it. Now, if you read the economic uh, media and talk to sharp economists, they'll tell you all things that's maybe wrong with leading indicators. I, I hear that. I'm not questioning that. But I've got my own sense of keeping an eye in my head where we are now. And, of course, once a month. You need to focus on it. So 0.6, consensus 0.7, and then we could go that range. I think we're going to be a little bit on the downside here. Yeah. This uptick on the rates, which we're going to get to, make sure I'm right there. Hold on. Did not go well and should not go well. Yeah, you see that? Yeah. That uptick up there. Uh, and we've been pretty side, side, sideways. A uh, little bit on downside on the long term. So, We'll see. And you saw what happened with mortgages. We looked at mortgages. Uh, sorry, sorry. I, I think I, I, you guys probably missed me. Missed the screen. Okay. Looking at the mortgages, you'll see mortgage apps. Uh, that's, uh, I think, Mortgage Bankers Association, MBA. Uh, yeah, Mortgage Bankers Association. There we go. Uh, not, should not be surprised. Huge drop on purchases. And then going negative on uh, refinance, this is again in, uh, interest rates, yeah. I think it was premature for people to think that uh, 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 we're done. And I think uh, uh, Jerry, as we call him, Jerry Powell, came in and uh, put that to rest. That uh, We're not done. We'll probably have another couple. I would humbly submit to you that we'll be more than a couple. Why? Uh, Non-farm. The economy is strong. Don't tell me it's not. And we've also printed more money again. Okay, Last year, look at all those uh, bills that went through. I don't care if they were bipartisan or not, but we're printing money. 
to do to do those and pay for them. So as you uh, increase the money supply, your inflation is going to stay up. Uh, when the uh, your uh, M M two your money supply is going to stay, up. your inflation is going to stay being persistent, and then comes Powell and company to tighten up. So I I just when I talk to some of the uh, 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 real estate guys here, they're really, really getting optimistic. I told them, no, that's not my opinion. Now, I'm not a real estate guy. You know, my sister is, but not me. And she's on the hospitality area, the hotels, and the, you know, large restaurants and all that, but not me. Uh, I'm, I'm just looking at uh, 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 builders. I look at uh, permits. I look at uh, 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 housing starts and rates. And of course, post dot Frank uh, affordability, and that's going to be a problem. Look, so communities now being built, rental only, rental only. That's not good long term. Okay, the whole movement in the uh, uh, real estate was uh, uh, this uh, uh, food chain of uh, folks. You know, especially younger couples getting married, they need. They, uh, they they rent for a short period of time, then they buy, and then they need good f- new furniture, new uh, appliances, and all that. And that opened up the free up the the, ne- the generation who sold to them to go and ho- go and hunt a bigger and better uh, 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 real estate and as utility function, as mainly for the uh, principal place of residence. I think we're breaking that. I think that we are. So it's going to be a problem, and also. Both with the rates up and values up, okay. The, the affordability is a major, major challenge. So, uh, and then you go to the commercial side. Um, I think 14% of commercials are office CMBSs, commercial mortgage-backed securities. I think they're all affected. All have some issues. So, good luck. We won't mention subprime loans and all that. You know why? Because it's really not a focus and where there's no panicking anybody. But subprime loans on the cars, for example, that's another disaster they did for votes in the, of uh, Midwest. Really, really disaster. Union votes and all that. So that'll come to roost also. Manufacturing and PMI and, and the work of services, just a composite. Read this section. That gives you a good feel. As a matter of fact, I was refreshing myself. Of how they combine this thing and why. So, but that's on 10 o'clock on Friday. Okay. Remember, the following week is the uh, uh, end of the quarter. That's going to be uh, a little bumpy. So, you have a lot of expirations there. Let's go to charts. Okay. You want me to need you need me to help you need you help me buy a house. Okay. I don't know. You need yourself. You gotta buy it yourself. Yeah, you're okay. But remember, I, I agree what you what you're driving at. But remember, you can win if you don't play, and you can't play if you don't pick up a bat and go to home plate. No, I understand. I know. I know what you said. I know what you said. Yeah, I know. I know what you said. Yeah, but you, you gotta realize that. That. that yeah, I, I know what you said. I don't know. I truly understand that. But I'm, I'm just saying that there are times that you really got to be uh, focused on what you're doing, uh, go the extra mile, and ask yourself and learn from what went wrong to learn for next. Next, you can't give up, you and you can't get a big, you can't take on a big bet. If you take on a big bet, something goes wrong, you're never gonna go back. So you gotta keep your bets size small, keep track of what you're doing, journal your trades. Learn from your mistakes. As uh, Borsellino used to say, Louis Borsellino, love your losers. Okay, you, But you got to take notes of why why that happened. So That's why my uh, 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 journals are most dearest uh, things for me. I, I never kept journals before anything else except trading. And it was the hodgepodge. Sometimes I was keeping traveling on Excel sheets and all that. And these in, these in the last couple of years, just uh, chemistry, uh, 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 lab lab homework uh, kind of a notebook they're a couple of bucks, three bucks, four bucks you get a CVS, whatever, very simple you can order it on Amazon six at a time, they're, they're cheap but this way you have a chance to uh, um, write down everything uh, and I go between the 
two to three pages a day, okay? Uh, depends on how active I am and also how much extra time I have. But at the minimum, entry, exit, time of the day for each. Um, let's see. Um, uh, let's see. Um, um, how you feel in the morning? Uh, key events, news-wise. Uh, and if you get exogenous news, you got to add it. Uh, what time it came, but uh, uh, your econ data, just what's important. So that's why in the morning I opened up, go in there, let's say uh, around nine ish, to see where we are. Obviously, by looking at stuff at night, you know, the 830 stuff. 830s are huge. Uh, I hate this son of a gun who changed the margins. Uh, I think they're trying to, you know, clamp down on the uh, speculation. I understand that. Uh, but also, it lowers the volume against you, also. Okay. Don't forget, uh, it's not just, uh, uh, hey, uh, uh, now all of a sudden, I'm a quarter of what I could trade. If you think about the thing, ES and NQ. I'm sorry, N NQ and MNQ. It's about a quarter of difference or four, four X difference in terms of what you can do. Uh, but so it's on the other side. So it's not that you cannot trade more. The volume is in there to trade against. So it also skews your indicators. Yeah, it's just, I wish they had kept it from at eight. Uh, I think part of the problem with at eight is that, uh, the, and they don't want to admit some of themselves are not in. Remember, to run a successful margin desk, you need bodies, not just AI packages to keep track of the uh, accounts and orders and you know, the patterns and all that, but you also need bodies. Uh, somebody's got to go there and say account A, goes on margin call, or account B goes on uh, LTO, liquidation trades only, okay? And those are different ways you have to deal with it. And it takes time. And uh, and then you have to have manpower to take the calls. You can't put somebody on LTO and not take his call. Uh, it's gonna have, you're going to have some problems. Yes, you're gonna, when they're going to call in, you're going to give them a lecture. As a broker, you have that right. But you have to be available that doesn't mean that instantly, but you know how many people go on LTOs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when that's a punishment. When you've done, you're sure you've been there, okay? Where you finagle with them, or uh, as somebody else said, all the documents are sent back, and there weren't some of those things. This is Florida. Yeah, they come in after you. They come and look at it on your data. So what the hell are doing again? I thought you said you're not gonna do this again. So, no. Oh. And my answer was, I didn't think you're gonna catch me. Yeah, right. They do. Long time, one of the guys from um, uh, Transition came here to have lunch with me. He says, "I get, I gotta get this formality out of the way. I gotta tell you, some people are upset with you." I said, "Alright, f up. Yeah. Let's move on." Yeah. So, so, they, so they they bring the guns after you too. Just just give you a lecture. Oh well. Wow. All right, let's go to our first chart, timer chart. You know, sometimes being best is to be low key. Under UTR, under the radar. Just do your thing and don't don't get too uh, exposed out there. So, all right, we're gonna buy. Uh, we are across to the upside. This is a 50 bar over 200. So generally speaking, uh, and of course there's some retest failures, but generally speaking, this is where you are for the uh, move up, and you can see that the retest failures. Okay, retest failures where uh, you you in a, you in a trend. You depart the trend, go to a certain key level just for testing of it. And then as long as you bounce off, that's the retest value. If you punch through, then you didn't, you didn't retest, you didn't fail the retest. You, you passed the retest. It's going through this lower level. So, so far we have kept up. Now, the, we were also very low and the, the Sigma channel width was too low. That's the difference between that as, as a percentage of High and low divide by center, because you have to uh, uh, make it unitary. You have to normalize it against the scale we're in. Okay, your two percent up here is very different than two percent down there. So you can't just go by scale over, but by, by just the values you have to normalize it. Uh, so we we bounce up here. We've gone to a channel plus one plus two, and we didn't make it to three. We usually don't on indices, but that was a big day. 
that was the day before expiration. And what did I say? Next day, I don't remember. I remember I'm near the close. One of the folks said, for, and I, I knew he was short. He didn't say that. I knew he was short. He had told me. But he and, I, and he asked uh, privately, and I did not mention his name because of privacy. What what do, what should I do up here? I said double down. What? I said yeah. I would double down because I think we're coming to expiration. You know how many calls are up here that are active? These are short calls against the book. Remember, you're buying these. It's go go days, right? Hardy party or party hardy, party hardy going up. Well, there's somebody on the other side. It's called Market Maker. And he's got all these short calls on his hand. Do you really think he's going to let you cash those in? Are you naive? This game is rigged. Either you're inside or you're outside. Remember Gecko? Yeah. Either you're in or you're out. They're going to turn this around. And they did. Now, three days is a good rule. So um, we'll see what things are going on. I got to see how tonight is or early tonight. Like, between six and seven, after I finish this uh, iced coffee, uh, which I'm cheating, I shouldn't have coffee. Uh, I, I will take a look at all my these numbers again and make a decision. Uh, it's not where I want it to be, but it is what it is. So, here's a chart we put up earlier today, and we used. Uh, I think at that time we were at 62. Okay, we closed at what 65. Okay, we went up three points. Here's the chart we put out there on the trade station. I mean, on our PMT pages. And I think also, uh, hold on. Also, huh? What's going on here? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, from our, uh, uh, let's see. Guys, they organized too many stuff. Okay, here we go. There you go. Boom. Here's our charts as of uh, about 11 ish. That's where we are. Our differential between these two levels are about 100%. This is nine years. So we've done about 10%. We've beaten 10% per year on SPX. This delta is 100%, so 101 almost. Now, we've had some great numbers before, but that's when we hit everything. I mean, we hit it right, and the market just went to toilet anyway. And then on the recovery, we caught it. Now, I can't live with that. This is not my fame. This is Admiral Tico. He's the one who said, Daddy, sell him. Daddy, sell him. I said, why? He goes, COVID. I didn't know what COVID was. That's the sign of a smart doggy. Yeah. And of course, down here, we had a webinar here. You guys were there, majority of you. That we said, Spring Equinox. Look for that. And we turned on that evening of Spring Equinox back into 2020. Those two changes, this one and this one. No, no, here, this one, this one, this one. These two really catapulted me way above the rest. But the rest of these, as you see, there's a lot of noise. We've done good this year, year too. This past year, we've done good too. Now, remember, one key. There's a key hit, this key item you got to realize that. This is SMP buy and hold. Hold. We call them buy and hold, not buy and hold. Uh, cash return, okay, because as a, as a base, as a percentage of base. But remember, this does not show S&P when we're flat. It can't, because this is the, this is to keep track of what Timer Dodge is doing. When we anchor a price, they anchor off of SPX. So when we go long, for example, they take a value of SPX, and from that point on, we have three strategies, three ways we can go: long, short, or flat. So when we go flat. We pick up next time based on the new SMP. We do not show, nor do we need to, to show what was SMP did in between. But the endpoints are correct. Okay. So the whole issue is do we go long and market went long? Do we go long, market went down? Do we went short, market went short? Do we went short, the market went up? There's four categories. So you, you do it uh, and you normalize it over a long period of time, it creates the ranking system for a top 20, 120 times. Uh, so we posted that. We're still short with Tyler Digest. As I said, that we would. And we'll think about doing a, 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 a spread. Now, if that doesn't work today, if I, the numbers do not line up the way I want, then we will not go long. We just go flat with Tyler Digest. We already had our short and got busted. 
because of uh, he went our way a little bit and then got busted. But I understand. Um, okay, okay. We're at negative nineteen now. McLean oscillator for Nasdaq and plus nine. So see, this is a coin toss right now. My inclination would be to hold on a little bit longer to the downside. So maybe we'll put another trade on. Maybe half size. I'll think about it. I'll let you know. I'll let you I always what we're doing now with send the burp burst out for the trade, saying the trade is coming, be ready. Because we're getting people who are they're absolutely not ready. Okay. And and then I get the sobbing stories and you know what? Uh some people need to grow up. Okay. This is a this is an email base. It's not that crucial time wise. You know, you have probably half an hour to an hour to get in to have an exact match what we're getting. Uh, and I'd say probably has a shelf life of a couple of hours, maybe half a day, no more than that. If you uh, go to next day, all the numbers are different. All the calculations are different. And so it may not be as attractive. That's all. Uh, I've, I've had a few who've done it their way. That's fine too. That's up to you. It's your money. You do what you want. But don't cry, don't come uh, cry for me, Argentina. Okay? Yeah. Later. I have had too many <laughs> crying on my shoulders. <laughs> yeah. So please. <laughs> yeah. I, what did I say? I'm not Dr. And then there's a husband and wife having an issue with each other. Hey, I'm not Dr. Phil. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to get involved in that. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> okay. We have a cross here on the CI diff, as expected. The low cost, you see the idea went negative. You see the peak? I mean, this whole thing is about reading the nu nuances, the tea leaves. I don't know if you like tea or you like coffee, but start reading the tea leaves. The reading of the tea leaves are important. We had a little bit of push up on ratio. I still like this better than, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, than Lowry's, uh, the, the, this one, this one. I mean, th this is subject to a lot of interpretation. This one is very, very simple. And it's just very rudimentary, okay? Uh, you get a, you need to look for this. You get a spike up, remember it's inverse, inverted, down 12. The spike up, the next spike is lower, and that's usually the end of the push down. So we try to keep it simple, yeah. Probably it's because my IQ is not very good, so especially these long days, uh, you get very really tired. Okay, transportation. Now, remember this bar? You guys remember this? What I said, this is unusual, guys. Look what happened to the rest. This was a heavy duty bar, and we've gone there. So, but that's also coming to a CI cross, to a downside. Russell's already started it. So, yeah, when you post these on a double data input, your data one, data two with trade station, you have to say which one you want for the input. Otherwise, the default is the first one. We're not, this is not a CI for Dow and this one for utility index. No, industrial and utilities. No, this is, uh, this is actually Dow theory right there for you. But um, this is for, uh, the, this CI is for transportation, which is a very good indication of what things to come in SPX. And of course, Russell is, uh, does the same thing for NASDAQ. Well, that's just a backup. Excuse me. All right, luck clockwork. We had eight. Uh, uh, we, we finally got to eight uh, out of eight to be positive, and so we got pulled back. It's just very, very natural. Yeah, you know, the issue is at times how 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 far north we go, and obviously the 50 bar is a lead. That's just normal. Those are percentages. What's what suggestion I have for you? And this is very very simple. It's uh, price minus a moving average price. That's all this is. That's what the trender is. But I would go to transportation and do this. Hold on. Uh, right, double right click, you get, you get blow it up. And then mark what these levels are. What's the observ the empirical observation, what those levels were. You can see we have quite a bit of room, okay? Where this, la the last time it's inverted, okay? It doesn't mean next time we'll invert at those level, but it's close enough so you get a feel to be a little bit extra cautious or or stay a uh, cowboy if you want to. Just remember, cowboys don't win. Geeks won. So, yeah. 
in the long run. Yeah. Okay. This is also is telling us that, hey, uh, the upside could be limited going forward. Uh, this is a better scale to have a more of an expanded view because it's the weekly chart, you could see. So we haven't had this in a while. Look at it. We haven't had this in a while. I'd say probably a year. So again, that that typically says we're about to peak, and there should be a uh, some uh, retracement. Yeah. Here, here's the issue. Here's the question: What is the catalyst? That's what you need to go after. We're not in the business of predict, predicting what predict, predicting predicting what that catalyst is because we can't. We can't. This is too much. Too many variables there. Human mind can't process all of that. But something is going to go off. Because this is beginning to give you that signal. What it is, I have no idea. Yeah. Could be even uh, Putin does something stupid. So, I mean, I don't understand what the hell is wrong with this idiot. Other than being Putin. That he puts uh, nukes in Belarus. That changes the whole power, power uh, formula there. It's just ridiculous. But remember, he's a lawyer and he's a KGB officer. He doesn't know much about geopolitics other than on the job training, yeah. But from their point of view, their data sets, yeah, their facts and figures, or what I call their alternate facts, yeah. Okay, here's another problem we're having. Again, we're looking for clues where things could go wrong. Why is VIX this low? Somebody needs to tell me that. So why is this this low? And I don't have an answer. Now, I would submit to you the next stop could be around 11. Now, that could be extra, a little bit late. Yeah. We may get long here for a small pop, but the amount of move up is small compared to move down, where this thing shoots up again. Given the right catalyst, the issue is, again, what's the catalyst? So, okay. So three days. There's a possibility tomorrow afternoon or Friday morning we reverse and go back up. Uh, there's some other data we're going to look at. Here's the skew. Ah, oh, Murray, look at that. Okay, hold on, hold on, Murray. Here's your skew, refreshing. Uh, yeah, it's closed. Yeah, is it, is it post close? Uh, that's today. Yes, yes. Okay. So, uh, we had this was a signal. Okay, four sigma. We hit it. But remember, this has a two month window typically. So what you see. Yeah, by the time you complete, forget about the skew, it'll come to roost. That's not something he's going to signal and says tomorrow. It's roughly about, excuse me, it's roughly about 60 days for the first tranche to go bad. And then, of course, depending on if you get order flow, um, then this could get even more. Uh, there was a question in the chat room today, and I get a chance to record this and send it out. To those who want to watch it later, that uh, can you tell uh, how or how can you tell what uh, bias next day you have? Uh, you're, you're forecasting, and I've been in that business since uh, 1980, 81. That was my last, uh, at least that was my official title, uh, strategic planner. So we did a lot of forecasting, but it was for you know, different projects. Yeah. The problem is this: you'll come to learn that you're, especially in the marketplace, you're. Uh, and don't don't get me wrong, we had really good resources. I mean, Wolfgang Demisch, the renowned uh, storied uh, uh, analyst for defense out of Morgan Stanley, was on my speed dial, uh, and uh, we took care of him. He took care of us because you need to have that view of uh, forward. Uh, Wolfgang Demisch, very very. I mean, he, he don't see him on uh, CNBC anymore. He doesn't. I think he's done pitching. But uh, very, very smart guy. Extremely kind. Uh, very, very generous with his time. Um, and uh, no classified stuff, obviously. We couldn't talk to him on anything classified. So, But he had enough access to defense stuff uh, that, that, they were, uh, uh, that un, they were unclassified to give you a color, to give you a feel about what, you, what you're seeing. But, then, but one thing you learn. And he, he said it too, and you learn in the marketplace too. Your your delta time forward for accurate forecasting is about one to two deltas. 
So if you're running daily charts, the best you can do, and you should pat yourself on the back if you get it right, is one to two days. Anything beyond that, the dispersion angle opens up wide. So it's really not scientific anymore. It's you gambling. So to me, this is a little bit too far. If that signal is going to come, we'll have more to go. And we've already pulled back. So probably we're going to get another push up for some other reason. That will be a M, and this is probably that's the one you want to short. For moved on, if that comes. If the catalyst isn't there, it's a fantasy. It's not going to drop. We're actually going back up. There's a group of people uh, uh, that are uh, of, of, the, of the school that uh, uh, in the, uh, either before the year end or by next year this time, SPX will take the highs out, the absolute high. I'm of that school. It will be next year this time. Why? It's called elections. Yeah. You build everything on the third year of presidential cycle, okay? and so that the economy would be very, very robust by the fourth year when the, uh, the incumbents do that, with using the power of the government to be to have a robust economic story to give to the uh, uh, voters. Uh, the market sees it a little bit earlier. You know, it's a very fantastic, I mean, market's a fantastic uh, uh, discounting mechanism. So it starts a little bit earlier, but yeah, you know, this, this uh, I, I think uh, the peak will probably come uh, um, Probably, I'd say, uh, nine months from now. And I don't think Fed is finished anyway. So we may pull back up, and then really, when everybody gets depressed, then r r rush up to the high, very highs. Uh, remember, it's going to discount the economy. So, Okay, treasuries. This is the treasury uh, complex. 90... 91 discounts. These are yield, yield, yield to maturities, 5, 10, and 30. Uh, actually, this is not bad. It's 30 years to pull back. This is all uh, long range obligations like insurance, pension funds, so forth. And the money goes into uh, you know, big, big premium real estate, basically, because you need to be very stable for that. Uh, if you've done any big commercial loans, you go where these guys operate and uh, uh, when you uh, get a get a note, it's it's a yield from here. It's a spread between the thirty year. This is housing and this is cars. Uh, the econ data is strong. I mean, you, you can see it. You can read it here. It's strong. It's just not as weak as we thought. So, uh, even though uh, and even though inflation is still rampant, yes, we have ticked down a bit. But I don't see it in the wage inflation. The still wage inflation is still there. So, and I'm not an economist, but I'm just reading the tea leaves. Okay, this one we moved last month. I mean, last issue. I'm sorry, last week, to the right uh, contracts. Let me verify again. Yes, long July, short November. Right now, obviously, Junes are gone. Junes are history. Uh, uh, Julys are late. So you need a three months, and that's what we think. It was that. Uh, Rallying up at that, and they kill it again. Uh, the more we go up, the more it's going to drop. Why? Uh, VIX is the inverse asset. Volatility class is an inverted class. Uh, so th this is going to pull down. I think in that negative four-ish, uh, negative four and a quarter, then uh, you should you should be thinking about, hey, we're probably dead there in just the index. SP2. And the stock RSI, the rendezvous points. Yeah, a couple of folks were talking to us. I don't know what that indicator was, but you said rendezvous. Do you have any called rendezvous? <laughs> I said no, no. It's because it's got three parts to it, and they usually get glued. You know, they kind of go the same direction, but di but different frequency, uh, and different. I mean, the other phase, obviously. But when they all lined up, that's our rendezvous point, and we're done. And we're kind of there, maybe. We kind of we really haven't get a really good uh, uh, rendezvous for white line, which is the longest uh, uh, settings, longest, uh, slowest, and uh, biggest mover 
uh, of the stock RSI. It's, this is the work done by Tucho Chande. I just programmed it. There's, there's, I don't own it. It has nothing to do with me. But it showed me why I need CI. So this was that. So here what happened is that we're pulling back a tad, and that's because of this. Had we gone a day or two extra, you would have a very good rendezvous point. And, and it's followed by a strong drop. Remember this one? Yeah, that was incredible. So SP2, different animal. SP2, and there was a question, can we do this for the Qs or NDX? The answer is no. Here's the problem. Uh, uh, there's no there's no index like SMP for having in, uh, derivatives or internals. And not, not all of you see in SPX also exists in NDX. But, and also really you should time the market with SPX. 80% US equities, 80% because of the market cap. So when we're at 92, 93, I was pounding the table. Guys, get out. Get out uh, while you can. If you already stopped out, then fine. But uh, you, you need to initiate new shorts rather than panic here. When your back is against the wall, I hope that you will think the best. That's crucial. That's what the difference is. When you're under hammer pressure. Yeah, so when we get to 90, 92, 92 and a half, that's not a time to bail out. That's time to double down. Uh, it's a rubber band effect. You know, I, sometimes I use it. But I don't sit there and say, hey, Farrington said that I'm doing it. No, no, no. I put the, rubber, you know, the double down on, but now I'm not moving from the machine. Okay? Yeah. My coffee is there. My water is there. I've already used the voice room. I'm not moving because if something is wrong, they can hand me my head. So that was a double down mode, and we did okay. So uh, I thought Friday would be it. Remember, historically, if you trade options, you know midday, midweek, there's a reversal. We didn't see that. So when we got to Thursday like that, I said to myself, all these OIs, who's going to pay for this? It's going to be. Harry Moore and Jack is going to be the retail guys. So the, uh, so market makers will turn it around, and they did. They're turning around big time on Friday. Yeah. Okay. We uh, Admiral Tico posted this chart. Uh, frankly, it's a non-story. It's just, you know, it's not, it's not giving us anything right now. We're not in, at any extremes. We are kind of close to it on uh, – Monday, on Tuesday morning, and it's gone. No longer there. So we'll see. Again, sometimes this is very, very good. It's got a few rules. And you can see it between um, Dorsman 1 and Walter Deemer. They have these uh, uh, quotations go back and forth. And because I post some charts, and I mentioned, go to these guys. They're good at this. Ask them. Well, out of courtesy, they hit the reply back when they're answering it. So we have picked up a lot of people, followers-wise. But I'm really not good in that conditions that you need to follow. It comes with experience. And that's why we show a link there. Say, so go read the link, which is from Lowry Research. Next one is uh, uh, Peter's favorite uh, setup with Lowry's. Again, we're using futures there. Okay, uh-oh, uh-oh. You know what that is? That means correction. Okay, let's see. There we go. Oh, there was a question. When do you rotate? I rotate when CME rotates. There's a rollover that, uh, page. I think we showed it last night in our um, OTF webinar. Not OTF, I'm sorry. That's Peter's. ORB webinar. ORB webinar. Uh, you need to take a look at that, but we follow... What the exchange does because it's a, a rollover is like a tsunami. You cannot fight over it. So you, you gotta go with the flow. All right. Uh, long here. Long. You see right there. Long again. And of course, long. So trend following, it, it has a little lag. Obviously, it's crucial to have a follow through. So this be a while before it's negated. So be careful. Yeah, in terms of uh, taking decisions that way. All right, what else do I need to do here? Those who don't know, here's where we are. Market is closed right now between five and six. So you could see what happened there. This is expiration. 
Yeah. Is it? Yeah. No, no. No, no, that's not it. That's 20. This is expiration. Yeah, this is expiration. We get volume. Yeah, this is Monday. There's no volume. You could see what they did. The double top there. And you could see, you know. Uh, there was no divergence there, but on the way down, look at it. Boom. And then they just went nuts. So all those OIs had to be notified. It's just that simple. They're not going to pay. They, they have to pay. That's what you do. They trade through the exchange. But, or they can move the market enough where the puts, uh, the long calls will go worthless and the short puts get into trouble. Uh, and uh, yeah, short puts get into trouble. And so they create a massive havoc and then buy it at the bottom and then cover and go home for the weekend. One last short. Okay. This is one. Let's see where we are. Let me close that. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was talking to this one guy. Obviously, he's just got off the boat. Uh, he says, you know, uh, why are you so forceful? I said, I'm an alpha male. This is trading futures. You got to be a wolf. You can't be a sheep. What does that mean? I said, well, you know, if you flush the bombers at the first instance, then you become alpha male. He says, you threatening me? You didn't get what I mean. Flush the bombers. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. You need to read. I'm not threatening anybody. That's a lingo in the Air Force. When you flush the bombers, is that you, you feel you have to attack. The other side has first strike uh, scenario. So, had a little fun with him. First, he thought I was threatening him. I said, no, no, no. Go, go, use the Google. Go to do, use the translate function. Yeah. Flush the bombers. Yeah. Oh, anyhow. Uh, by the way, great movie to watch. War Games. There's a talk about flushing the bombers a few times there. If you can find it, uh, I forgot who played in it. Uh, the War Games. This, this was like in 83, 84. Yeah. How, how somebody with a Atari machine got into the system at, uh, I think, Minot Air Force Base in, uh, I think that's North Dakota, North Dakota, or is it South Dakota? I don't know. Minot, M-I-N-O-T. Uh, it's a bunch of uh, um, silos. All right. So we pulled back. We have not yet much. We almost hit 65. This is a very threshold that we can pull up. But they sold into a, look where it's turned around on that, on that Thursday. Before expiration, the moving average are about to cross. Okay, uh, so we can't say anything yet. This is there's no separation. When you don't have a separation, it's a tough call. It's a coin toss. So uh, no signal here. Okay, that's my spiel. Any questions for me? Of course, as always, I appreciate you guys attending. Make it all worthwhile. Yes, Matthew Roderick. Yes, yes, sir. That's the one. Yes, yes, yes. Great movie. Yeah, great movie. Yeah. 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 And the funny part, the best the best guy in that movie was the the general and the programmer. The not the programmer, the system guy. Head of the system guy who ran the operation at the at the Chan Mountain. And then the general who just says F this, F that, da 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 and he's just going nuts. Of course his favorite thing is to flush the bombers. <laughs> Yeah, and they didn't even wait to talk to the president, you know. So, oh well. Anyhow, um, actually, over the weekend, I watched. I think it was uh, net on Netflix. Maybe it was been on Prime. The Courier. This had to do with the 60 to 1960s Cuban Missile Crisis. Look, two story, five thousand pages of GRU documentation was copied. With a Minox uh, camera, my dad had a Minox because you know, you, as a part of being a diplomat, they, you go through the six months of intense counterintelligence training. He had a Minox; uh, he had to return it. Not, not here; it's too expensive. But uh, with a Minox camera, these guys took five thousand pages, and they almost got away. And then finally got caught. Uh, the the English guy got sent back two years later, in horrible shape. This is a true story. It was actually. Some pictures, actual pictures of him. 
at the end of the interview. A horrible condition. And, of course, the GRU officers got executed. Uh, but the family was allowed to live in uh, a state of small uh, 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 what do you call it? apartment in uh, uh, Moscow. This is 62. Yeah. I mean, they had gone nuts when they found out. So much data went. As a matter of fact, that data was used to put the track on for the U-2 to fly over Cuba. It actually showed where to go to find these uh, slots. So, yeah, great movie. Great movie. Just, yeah. So, I love that. Uh, I, I love spy movies because it makes you think, especially game theory, because it's a known unknown. You got to think about the known unknown. Two, especially if they're real, the documentary. It's not somebody wrote a book. Like, War Games is fictional. Uh, although there's some similarities of mirroring issues, but yeah, you know, the stuff like 62 uh, uh, Cuban crisis, Cuban missile crisis, no joke. That's serious stuff. So. But uh, of course, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we we did not. The machine is programmed that way, so we can't go and change it. We didn't create today. Yeah, we could turn it off. But then it wouldn't be easy if I, tu- I mean, turn it back on because they have to issue code. Yeah. Because they have to be fair. Do you know how many people are trading on it now? Yeah. Yeah. More people have come in to trade in the chat room. Uh, more people on MNQ only, they're on their own on the trade station. And we're going nuts at uh, um, Fox. And also, uh, uh, wait, that's going up to uh, at uh, Striker. Now, at Striker, could explode because they publish. If you go a month or so, or really like we did in like uh, October, when we went through October, both years, both last year and prior year, that we have that prior year we just started. It wasn't on striker, but last year October was on striker, and we went every day we're making five, six on the NQ side. We're making five, six, seven thousand a day. You know what happens? Explodes. I mean, everybody has brought it comes in. That creates a problem because you have too much trading there. You can almost just see it. You can almost see when it hits because they accuse that guy's small liquidity. Uh, I'm not trying to take credit, but I'm just saying, uh, to be fair, you know, you got to give credit where it's due. Um, so once we're done with RM here, the risk manager, uh, we're going to go and mix it with the, the five old on uh, the way we want for uh, for this coming. Uh, so we have a small window. Then we're going to get to that for this coming uh, uh, fall for that kind of a, a push. But no, we're still take, sticking to no Wednesdays uh, because the logic is you get big activity on Fridays and Mondays. Fridays are some uh, the non-farm uh, OX and all that. Uh, and then Mondays are merger Mondays. We still have a lot of work done on the golf courses with a cigar and a whiskey between the M&A guys. So they do their work on the weekend. They, they write it up, multi-billion dollar deals on Friday, Sunday night. And first thing you know, as you're driving to work or, uh, or your uh, guest of Dennis, as you're sitting by the pool, trying to get a couple of, uh, a few uh, handles here and there on the ES and NQ, the news comes, this guy, this company, about that company, and so forth. The next stage is the drop-off. Okay. The drop-off on Monday goes to Tuesday. So this is a good question because Monday will close this thing. And of course, the, you don't drop back from Thurs, from Friday to Thursday. No. But because Wednesday is a low activity day, as it hums up, get more activity, it goes through Thursday. So we get some activity on Thursday and then Friday then the day. If you go back, we published our results. Uh, it's, uh, it's a results actually that, uh, no, that's not it. Uh, nope, um, no, no, I don't want to go there. Now I got to erase that piece. Ah, okay, so that's the wrong one. Oh, it's here, sorry. Yeah, no, 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 no. hold on. Um, there we go. If you go here, we publish that. Okay, this comes from uh, Marshall. I have nothing to do with this other than I wrote this code to calculate it. That's all. And once, and there was an error in it, somebody found it. We corrected that. It's still running. This is the NQs. It just was incredible. Of course, we stopped NQs because of the problem in December. We're going to go back. We're about to give a green color on NQs. Um, okay, so uh, yesterday data is not in, okay? 
But uh, and then every, as it comes in, we apply. I got to apply this part. Uh, Marshall is not good to Excel, but uh, uh, but, uh, but he puts in the data in, and then we compute. And uh, we'll begin to uptick up. We're about uh, 380 now from this date, from the day we started. So it's, it's not a month. It's not yearly ROI. Okay, that's not correct. It's ROI since inception. It is 380%. So. Remember, best ORB, opening range breakout, that MarketWatch had was 46% per annum. I don't know how far back they went, okay? We can only go with what we have done, not a back test. But actually, we have trade station and the Stonex uh, uh, statements of Marshall Street, and he he archives everything. He's a very very good archivist. Actually, um, uh, his, his his office all automated, so they scan everything and it gets put into a, a big big disk. So we archive everything. Why? I said we we I don't want to make any claims. I says your money, your you you trade it. It's your account. And uh, he says, I, it's a small account of this. He says, no, no problem. You guys can have it. I don't even care that my address or not. This is a peanuts for him. Yeah, uh, he's done very well. He's done very well. Good for him. And mainly in real estate, not in trading. He's okay. His account in trading is pretty good too, but it's not like real estate. He's uh, off the charts on real estate. I started with one hotel, one hotel in Culver City. I remember that. So he's done very well. Now he wants me to do some uh, project with me. And I just say, I, uh, I need some time off. I just can't. I, I, got, I already have two babies. Let me grow them. I got work on Orb. I got work on Tiger Shark. And I have hedge funds coming in for the Tiger Shark. I just can't be able to go there and do everything. You know? And it's different time zone. He's in L.A. All right. Any more questions for me? By the way, about short and weak. What's the big difference is the EIA data. Did you notice that the EIA data for tomorrow, okay, has got uh, uh, both natural gas, nat gas, and petroleum? Because usually that gets on Thursdays. No problem. But EIA is on Wednesday. Short week, they moved it. This is a double whammy there tomorrow. So, yeah, of course, the. the uh, what do you call it? Uh, oil companies do not want to lose their influence. So in there. I think oil companies going to be a different shape in about 10 years. And one of them is uh, Tesla. One reason is Tesla. Yeah. And now, especially now that uh, GM and Ford adapted their uh, format for charging. So, But I would not go there. I still won my uh, Jaguar with a uh, high octane fuel <laughs> on nitrogen tires. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a racing guy, so I wish I had a 14. Oh, I would, I would wish I had a 14. Yeah, my favorite uh, uh, racing car. So anyhow, I'm out of here, guys. Any other questions for me? Hey, I don't mind one of these either. Don't get me wrong. This would do about the same speed, but does, but there's something else more sexier about uh, a swap wing when you can move the wings. Now you don't, you gotta make sure it doesn't get blocked or get into trouble. But uh, my my roommate in college worked on the F-14 line and that was the typical part. What right? This is the, what's called wing box. Where the, when the wing is, uh, is a, a swap wing, not swap, but variable wing, you can move it. You have to put in there on a huge bolt, a uh, 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 rod, that gets bolted around it, and to fit it right, they have to freeze it. Okay, they drop it in as it comes to normal temperature, it locks in there. It's uh, it's it's uh, it's incredible in terms of technology of what uh, Grumman did. As they say, Grumman is uh, uh, and of course their their big thing is not their airframe, it's the electronics. They say they have we build wings for electronics. That's what they say. So it's an incredible manufacturing process in uh, uh, Calverton, uh, Long Island. Yeah, and then they fly out of bed page. But this is something else. This airplane is something. This is a um, Super Hornet. Yeah. Never worked on it. I had a pleasure and an honor of working on these, but not on those. These came after me. The difference is the nacelle, the in incoming uh, air into the engine. Yeah. Changed everything. Absolutely changed everything. And then, of course, to handle the bare, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, um, uh, uh, Flight envelope, 
you had to do these extensions of the wing into it. Yeah. So, yeah. Actually, when I was there, there was not even a talk of this. Why? We had so much problems with these. <laughs> Jesus. The first 24 aircraft, oh, nightmare. So now, Navy could not live without them. So, all right, boys and girls, I'm out of here. I gotta get back to some testing after a short walk with Admiral Tico. And let's see what he's got in, in in mind for tomorrow. As a as you know, today he came and joined us for a few moments and honored us with his presence to look at a few charts. But we'll see what his game plan in the morning is. Bye now. We'll see you in the morning. Thank you all. We'll get posted right after we're done here.